I call this meeting to order. Um, notice is given of a workshop meeting at the board at the district's board of directors to be held at 105 Port Road, Portersville, Texas, on April 24th, 2024, at the hour of 4 o'clock p.m. for consideration of the business of the agenda below. The notice is posted at the office of the district on April 19th at 9.15 a.m. in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act. Uh, I call this meeting to order. Uh, we have a quorum, Mr. Downey, Mr. Stark, Mr. Crowder, and myself. And uh, we're going to assume maybe Mr. Friedman is able to get here in a little bit. And with that, we'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father, we thank you again for all your blessings, Lord. We just ask you to continue to uh, give us knowledge, wisdom, and, and everything that we do here at the North North District, Lord, that, uh, that we will have a, a good workshop today. And we just also ask for rain in our watershed, that you give us more rain than we need. And uh, we just thank you again that you will lead us into this workshop. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for all. Amen. Amen. Brings us item three, the project overview. Okay. I'd like to present uh, Morris Valley. Uh, Bill Morris is here. Uh, David Pitry and then uh, Kyle Franklin in the back for the uh, Texas uh, Desalination Association. And I have two guests here that I want to introduce Rudy Garcia, uh, previous uh, chairman of the board. And, Howdy, sir. Uh, yes, and then uh, Mr. McLaughlin, Ray McLaughlin from uh, Texas Tech. He's just uh, invited, so he's here. I thought Scott you guys. Was, has been always the chairman of the board. How many years were you chairman? I remember that. I <laughs> I appreciate your service. I'm sure this is exciting to see this, this project going along. Mm -hmm. Good evening, uh, gentlemen. Uh, been a pretty busy last two, three, two, three months putting the project together. Uh, we had, uh, we've come a long way, and this workshop is really an interactive. It's not us necessarily making a presentation. It is to give you the information, but I, I think it, it behooves us to talk as, as we go along, interrupt us, and whatever. If you've got a question, let's let's discuss it. Um, so. This is the, you've got the kind of the agenda before you. We can vary from that as, as need be, but I think it covers pretty much everything uh, and probably then some. Talk about the schedules and the costs and, and various aspects of the project. Um, so we don't want you to get to, um, when, when we get to the cost slide, I, take a breath before we get to it, just, just so you understand the, the magnitude of the maximum profitable cost for the size project. And, that can obviously be changed a bit, but um, it's it's an important project in the sense that I know that several of the staff was up at the Texas Desal Legislative Workshop, and it, it's sobering how much water demand is coming forward without new water sources for the whole state. We're in the same vicinity of where we were back in the 50s, during the drought of the 50s, with the amount of uh, water per capita. And there's no new water sources. It's got to come from the sea, uh, brackish water. Uh, those are about the only two, because you're not going to get any reservoirs built for uh, any time soon, or you know, it's 30 to 40 years if you can get it done. So this is an important project. Um, we learned a lot also from Corpus Christi and there venture into developing their project. Um, I won't say, I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit when we get to the project, but uh, it's, it's really being open and honest to your constituents and the, uh, the stakeholders in the group as to what you're doing and being open, uh, an open book. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to David and talk about some of the details of the, uh, the project and, and the current staff. Good evening. So, right now on the slide that you have uh, before you 
is a, a general arrangement and layout of the, uh, the site itself. All right, so what you're looking at, because this is a lot of stuff in a small space, so the you know, resolution is, is, is a little tough. So the, the area right here is existing um, water plant number one, and this is the area that they're currently in construction where they're building the MF facility, and then the, the new ground storage tank is, is right here. So the, salt, the proposed site right now for the saltwater RO is uh, just above that. There would, you know, a road would go in here, and then you have this area here extending down into this area here for the, um, the saltwater RO treatment plant. The building itself is is located here and, and inside that building of course you have your electrical you have the uh, ro membrane you have the mf membranes and the the gray area that you have right now is it would either be uh, uh, enclosed in the building and to be utilized for future or just left where it is in the building built that it could be extended into the future and those are those are variables that as we continue through the process we'll be able to define um, and refine. Then um, over here we've got the you know just the fluoride contactors, um, the chemical feed systems are going in here, down here to um, some clarifiers and uh, the pump stations and all that. So. This this area right here is is existing, you know, on the water plant site. This portion right here would be, you know, it's not existing. Would be an acquisition that we can we can touch on as we get a little bit uh, further along. Down here is the intake location. Intake would be a structure built. Um, Along the, the coastline, along the coastline, um, and extend out into the turning basin right here. The, the structure itself would extend out minimally, but then you know we would need to dredge out. Um, and there's some slides coming up that'll show you the, the extent to what to what that would entail. After uh, the intake is there, then. This line right here, I have a magenta color, that's the proposed routing for the intake line to connect back up to the plant. And then there's another uh, line to concentrate discharge that would go down and then parallel the wastewater treatment plant discharge. And there's another shot that, that kind of goes into that <coughs> a little bit better. So this gives you, you know, the, the intake itself has moved around slightly in this area, um, you know, from, from down here to, to back up here, and this is by, by discussions with the, the navigation district and looking at interferences with the existing port facilities located down here. But what you see in the orange area is um, the area that would need to be dredged. It's currently, you know, anywhere from, you know, a foot going down as you, as, you, as you go this way, it's tapering off, and then the Corps of Engineers ranges it out down here to 35 feet. So we would be going uh, this area here to the channel from, let's call it um, shoreline to, to 30 feet right you know, here. So there wouldn't be a gradient in that, that orange area, and uh, that would be dredged out, the material would be taken off um, out of the area. <laughs> Approximately, how big is, is is the length I'm looking at there? Like fifty feet, two hundred feet out out here. Yeah, I mean, how long is that line you just drew? Um, I don't remember off the top of my head the length. We've been we've been looking at it in, in terms of, of uh, yeah, something along those lines. Okay. Yeah, it's just, just as, as a 
as an approximate amount. Like that's not a football field worth of, is it? When I'm looking, it looks like half a football field. Something like that. Yeah. 100 yards. So it is about a football yeah, it's 250, field. 250, okay. 250. Okay, good, thanks. So, so you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, <coughs> an undertaking and, and, and in the construction, that would be uh, you know, a coffer dam. You know, we have to block it off, build this, dig this out, and then, and then uh, pour the concrete and, and let, it, let it back in. There, there's a line right here that you see, which would be an aquatic barrier. Um, it would have a, you know, anchors on the bottom, a float at the top, and it would be to prevent um, uh, fish and everything from swimming into the area to be taken in to the intake. Uh, then we're going to have screens on the intake, and I'm going to show you some pictures of that. And then the intake area itself going in, the pumps, an electrical building, uh, just a maintenance area around there, and then it would connect into the pipeline and go off. Right now, th this, this, it, all of this and all the subsequent ones I'm going to show you on the intake are sized for 20 million gallons a day intake. Now that's more than you need right now, but as you can see, again, appreciation, the, the effort involved in, in, in this, you know, once you, you, you're going to do that once, if you went back, no, we want to be bigger, you know, you're going to go back and take, you know, it's going to be mind-boggling the, the, the problems that you would be going through to make that happen. So, but as we get into the discussion and talk about cost, this can be, this can be reduced but these are, you know, these are all knobs that can be, you know, adjusted, adjusted as, as we go. <clears throat> so and these knobs are defined, I presume. Th th they the later slide. They're not not specifically uh, in, in that regard because we're still defining some of the of knobs. You know, we know some of them, but, but we're still defining some of the others. So if if you were out in the turning basin and looking back at the intake. This is this would be you know the, the view that you would see. The orange area here is of what it would look like you know if, if there was no water and you were standing on the ground. That's the area that would have dredged out into a, a channel above the intake, and then um, you know the intake uh, seawall right there, and the intake itself is right here. There's going to be a slide that's going to give you a better visualization on that that portion. And to, and to what it what it would look like. How's the tides affect that? In, in what way? Like did the tide, does the water level go up and down based on the tides, or it doesn't? The chance yes, it, the, 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 it, it, it's it's going to be tidal and gravity. It's just you know, the water is going to go up and down um, at at the water line here. Um, or actually, here it's going to go you know up down for hurricane. It's going to go over. You know, could, could perhaps you know be be right. We we set the height of it um, ultimately about 11 feet, which is where the 1966 storm high water mark was. So so it's got some some cushion, but you know with uh, you know the current global climate change and issues, our storm's going to get worse. You know, I, I don't know. Yeah, but uh, but it's going to be fixed, and the water will will go. That would be one, you know, this is a big meeting we got a lot of time to ask lots of questions. Because I'm sure. trying to think like I'm a, I sit on HOA board, so I, I know when uh, we have to explain this to people, there's going to be some real skeptical people. They're going to be cynical as I'll get out. Mm -hmm. They're going to say, well, um, what about the first big hurricane that comes? How, you know, can it destroy the this whole intake? Um, you know, let's say we get a big tidal surge. It comes in really high. Does that wipe out all our stuff? Is there things we can do to mitigate that? Is it all? Is there already mitigation stuff? Like if suddenly the ocean comes in real tall, you know, it's like sorry, your pumps are dead. You know, find your pumps, and it's going to take a year for that to happen. And we have no water, right? There, there are there are mitigations that you can take, and and, and you know, as you know, you're 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 reinforcing and you're elevating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's the you know, the big big thing for. Or hurricanes. And uh, this is just big pumps, right? Sucking in water. Right. Just pumps. Right. So the structure itself is one thing. Now, the motors are a key to way above that. Okay. And your electrical control group is even above that. So you're, you're just talking with a high tide is both this for the structure. Yeah. And so you want to make sure that you, you protect the 
side. Yeah, our turbines are they're they're vertical, not horizontal, right? Yeah. So it's different than even like our pump station. Okay. So you don't really have protection if you fall during the bond issue uh as Intakes themselves are uh, a little different than what you, you, you may may or may not be familiar with. This is a, a picture of one that's not it's, it's installed in a lake or a river, um, and these this would be similar to yours. It's not 100 percent exact, but it's similar. So just just real quickly, these are the intakes themselves. Um, you know, about 42 inches wide, two millimeter. And, and, and the screens um, in service for 20 million, 20 million gallons a day. Uh, it would be four of these. This is showing six. It would be four. So from here down um, it would be the size that we're talking about. So the, the the screens themselves are designed so that they're minimizing, you know, the entrapment of of uh, fish life, sea life, uh, and and catching it and trapping it, you know, pulling it on the screen, not letting it get off. And so um, that's that's the design of these things. Subsequently, they're also built, meant to be self-cleaning because, as you know, sea life likes to grow everywhere, all over, all the time. And it's a perpetual, <coughs> never-ending battle. And so these screens themselves rotate all the time, and there are fixed brushes on the inside and outside. So as they're slowly rotating, you know, they're perpetually cleaning themselves, and that's how they're doing it. They're motor driven, and then the screens themselves go up and down in these tracks. These are all out of service right now, above the water line, and then when you go back in service, they go they go back down, and then uh, there's a trap door down there. I've got some, some pictures to kind of give you. Up. So impingement and entrapment is the Two main things that environmentally that you've got to take 
healthcare of business, and that's one of the things that you have to have uh, small enough opening and slow enough velocity that you don't get the marine uh, minor partner that help grow. They want to take all the larva, and so that's that's why these things are so expensive because you you have to make them large enough, the opening small, and the velocity slow, so a fish swinging by doesn't even one of the more expensive things in the process. Probably some stuff down there. Mm -hmm. So this is showing the, the kind of a cutaway of the streams themselves. An illustration down here would be a, a, a door that when the streams are up, it's shut so that you, you can't get anything swimming back and forth and get in there and get in your pumps and, and, and mess them up. Um, and so uh, that's just a, a, a view of that. Any any questions on on that? How it works? I, it might be stupid, but I. How often are those down, and how often are they up? I mean, if we're not, if, if ours are basically always going to be down. They're going to be they're going to be down, except for you know maintenance. Maintenance. Um, yeah. You know you. It, it's it's machinery. It can fail and probably would fail at some point. Right. So there's you, you need for the 20 mgd intake. You need three in operation. So there's four because you got to have one as a standby, right. and that's that's also pretty much a, a requirement on the regulatory side. So you you've got what you've got in operation, and then you've got a standby so that you know if one does go and you've got to pull it, you can put that one down. You know, and maintain your 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 capacity. Yeah, I mean, imagine Amistad and Falcon get all the way filled up 100. percent Would we ever? Would there be a reason we'd ever take this out of operation for a, a period of time, for six months, for or would that would that just not? Is that well, just not you're realistic? About the entire process. This, this plane's made to run. Right. It's not made to sit up. Kind of like a boat. Right. Yeah, so got to be running. The more you run it, the better off it is. And so, like, if, here's what. Here's what I would envision if you had a five year TV plan, uh, if that's what the ultimate size is, you you may operate at two most of the time and you're gonna alternate your trains. You know, like a million sure. pound a day train, and so I'm gonna operate today, I'm gonna operate this one, I'm gonna rotate those where you, they're not sitting longer than a day or two. Yeah, and they they keep equal amount of hours on their motors too. I understand. Right. Yeah. But uh, you can also uh, the, the, the amount of water that you want to keep. Let's say you're not going to use 20 million gallons a day every day, so you can only cut down and maybe use one or two pumps at a time instead of three. Right. Yeah, it's, it's going it, to, your, your pumps are going to have your demand that you want to put. Sure. As long as uh, the system is running 24-7. <clears throat> But just another view, kind of showing you the backside of it, what it would look like if you were standing in it looking into the, the filters. Um, a view with them lowered uh, and in place. And then uh, this, this one is to get into the um, intake and discharge locations with, with the, the plant all in one shot. So the, the detail is much less, but, but in order to get them all in, that's, that's what we had to do. So your, your, your intake is here, going into your plant here, and your discharge is down here where your existing, you know, with the existing outfall for the wastewater treatment plant. And so to get into that uh, uh, discharge, which is the plan that, that we're not adding any more out here in the water, we're going to connect uh, in a manhole up here on shore, uh, tie the, the pipelines in, and then you're going to reuse the existing discharge in the water. This the pipeline would, would parallel your existing pipeline from the wastewater treatment plant, and then you know, pick it up here, and then go back up here into the, the water treatment plant. So that's that's the general concept and layout for the the three components: the plant, the intake, and and the outfall. In, any any questions on on that? All right. Can the audience ask a question? Yes. Sure. Certainly, sir. Yes, thank you. 
at the environmental studies being done you know, before and after the study? Not yet. Well, this, this is where it's in the process. We're early in the process. There, there has been a, a study and a model done by the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, it, it's modeled the, the salinities and, and, and the impact of industrial discharge in the area, how the flows go, where it's going to, you know, what's it going to do. And, and they identified um, three intake sites as being the optimum sites for this to be located. And we are at one of those sites that they identified. So, so that's that there, there's been work done on a preliminary basis. The, the full environmental assessment, and there's two, two components to that one, kind of like an environmental survey, which is underway, and an environmental assessment, which is also underway concurrent, uh, being done um, on this project. It's going to look at uh, the fisheries, the, the impacts of the salinity on those, it'll look at endangered species, uh, uh, protected species, plant life, you know, fish life, bird life. It's all in the intake area and plant area and identify anything that's an issue and would need to be addressed. But right now, today, those studies are, are in progress and underway and the findings are not, are not uh, available. So Ricky, what, what this is, is we're in the initial stages. So things, this is a dynamic process at the moment, and so this is really the first chance that the board has had, had a chance to look at this as the project, the concept. <coughs> it's a little beyond concept, but not much further than concepts in the preliminary design. So this is this is the initial stage where the board buys off on you know, what is it we're going to do, what are we what are we pursuing. Then, then we take the environmental, we take this information to, you know, like we used to do with Mary Beth Campbell, or Mary Lou Campbell, yeah. and we would go to her as, as the, uh, what was the name? Sierra Club. Mm -hmm. And I said, we've got to have some water. What is the least impact? And so you bring that in before you ever get to a point where it's a point of no return. So we bring in the environmental folks and all the stakeholders and, and talk to them and say, we're not, we're not moving forward, we're, we're bringing in at the beginning. And so that, that, that's our goal, and I think that's the only way to get a project like this done. Well, I know the, the, the Illinois Board has been, has been being proactive for several years in the East South Estland on the island. But uh, I think this is great. I think it's wonderful. It's needed, obviously, and it's good to be proactive and progressive for this, for this kind of thing. I mean, it's been changing ever since we started looking at it. I guess now it's more cost effective over here. I don't think costs have come down just because of the nature of the economy these days. But yeah, it's not going to get any cheaper. But it's these costs. Are like this, our costs for everything else seem like they're creeping up. Right? So I think there's going to be a point where we find a meeting. When we get to that point where there's numbers on the screen today, uh, I'd like to talk about why we're not sitting down, or, or perhaps now is the time to sit down with Rio Hondo, those Fresnos, anywhere that we are currently connected to that. I don't see why they should participate in, in this in some sort of way if they perhaps. They have similar concerns um, about getting water. And if, if now's the time that we strike some sort of partnership with them, uh, rather than just like, yeah, we're gonna build it and sell it to them, if they need it, like, hey, maybe maybe we get them in at this point to, to go for it. Otherwise, like, we front everything up front and then, you know, we can charge more later on if they need it. Whereas if we form a partnership now, maybe, Hey, we're not gonna make as much money, but we don't have to front as much money either. It takes it takes all the risk out of our shoulders. So now would be the time. You know where our pipes connect. Like how far if we pump water, how far back up river can we get it today if we had to? You know what I mean? How much is that all connected? Can I get stuff to Harlingen from here? You know, can it go to Rio Hondo and then that connects to somebody else? How about a billion dollar next door neighbor? Tesla as well might want some water. You know, so we said uh, SpaceX, sorry. 
Carnage and I guess the uh, general manager and uh, Rio Hondo, Rio Hondo itself, and then Espresso and uh, something new. Yeah, and I mean, those the, are entities I've talked to them, and they're interested. The matter is that the fucking that's what they're trying to get uh, the funding wherever they can get it, and then they'll come back to us or uh, let us know. I mean, this may be something we have to take even farther upstream up at the state level, where it's like, hey, Governor, look, this is Port Isabel that needs water. This is the entire Rio Grande Valley mm -hmm. that needs water. We need a whole lot more than just, like, put us on the hook for 20 million bucks, right? Like, you know, the state had a huge windfall. We need you to champion this. This needs to be your opportunity here. So, you know, I would get real serious with our lobby and combine all our forces of all the cities down here. Every gallon we create in a desal plant is a gallon that they can take off the river. Yeah. You know, absolutely. I'm not sure. I, like, I, I never thought of pumping it back upstream because I don't even know if that's mechanically feasible. But I know that every time we, we create a gallon, they get a gallon. Or they have the opportunity for a gallon that we're not going to take. Across that channel, tell you there's a city. Heck yeah. My God, we should be lobbying too, like, soon. I have no problem. I almost had Julie rear in them at Starbucks just so she could have a half an hour to talk to them. The same. They probably split the bills. Also, regionalization, you know, regional approach takes a lot of small weight. You know, house here, we, we talk a lot about how can we make this class even better. That's more attractive, I should say, to people that aren't benefiting from kind of like our. That's, that's, that's a good point. You are, and you are in fact, as we get on my water, you are regional. You are three cities. Okay. Uh, three towns. And, uh, so that's, you, you use that before, but if you could go beyond the boundaries. <clears throat> so we so to do Southmost Regional Water Authority, which I don't know how to do that for a There's other cities over there. I think the city or that would be forward with and you met with them too, right, folks? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's Okay, proceed. Sorry, guys. No problem. That's, 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 what, that's what we're for. So, this, this is just to give you uh, familiarity and understanding with uh, why some of those pipelines, you know, we, we, we modified from where some of them will go to line. This is because um, this, this is off the, the urban site that identifies wetland areas. Of course, this is where the intake is going, and it's, it's a designated wetland area. But where the, the pipelines were looking, we were originally going to kind of go straight over, um, but there's a wetland right here, right here, right there. And so we, 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 we had to go up, over, kind of split the difference between them to get the the pipeline in there just to avoid any more wetland issues that, that, that we could. We, we can't avoid this one because that's where the intake's got to go. So there, there will be you know some wetland mitigation or, or conversations with the Corps of Engineers on what that would be and what that would take. Uh, and it's, it's in some of the other slides, just you know, an overlap on some of the other areas. So again, this is just to give you a you know, an overview of, of why why something is where it is, and, and what are some of the issues that are out there being being um, looked through. So, going into the current project status, um, right now there, there's several several things going on. The feasibility study, which you authorized, is underway. Um, these these points are just really you know covering the 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 scope and inclination of the study, but, but primarily the feasibility study is there to, you know, can, can, can it be done? Will it work? Does it serve the community properly? Is it um, uh, environment, you know, what's the impact on the environment? How's that going to be? What are they going to, and it's, and it's to uncover these issues, not necessarily to all in one spot, wrap them up, put a bow on it, but it's to uncover them identify them so that, that you know what you've got to do, you've got your, your marching order, so to speak, 
and you're going to go down these swim lanes and address those issues as the project goes forward. So that, that's underway, and, and it, it will go into the Bureau of Reclamation um, at the end of July. And so in that, uh, the feasibility study for the Bureau of Reclamation is they have to have, they look at it in view before they look at getting into their grants and their grant funding and their, as they evaluate the projects that they're looking at, they're looking at the feasibility studies that all the projects are turning in relative to, you know, when are they going to be ready, what are they doing, what's the impact, where, where, where are we going to, you know, help the most people that are in the best situation right now to, you know, accept these dollars. So, so that's, that's what the feasibility study is there for and um, is, is rolling right now. Any, any questions on that one? Is that all pretty clear? Sure, I might ask the timeline. I think they, when you get these feasibility studies, you get a couple of years of doing the work or not year to do a couple of years. There's a deadline of September, around September 28th or 30th, something like that, mm -hmm. to be able to get on the next, that next round of dollars in construction costs. And so one of the reasons we are really looking at July twenty fourth is to give one well, give us a little slack between then the near the picture some some time frame. But we the, the really the drop dead thing is, is to get in June in September. And so that gives us some time to review too and so we don't have any the the case and the report back hey you need to add this or that. But when we do this report um, we did meet with reclamation in class. They were in, they made a presentation at our legislative <coughs> session that we had with Texas Peace Out. And they talked about the financing and, and, and such. So uh, they locally, let's say locally in your reclamation in Austin office, they went to the Golden Report because they wanted the one of the correct way it would be uh, evaluated and sent to Washington. No, but they help you. They, they're here to help you do that. I kind of think it's a first government to here to help you. So I, I take that as part. No, it's good. It's a good organization to work with, uh, and they they want to work with you to make sure there's no no issues. And if, you know, if for whatever reason you know you miss those deadlines, then then you're a year a year you're you're in the next year cycle. So in, the, in, in expediting and pushing, that's why we're trying to get it in there so that we stay in this year's cycle and we don't get gap um, as we go through the process. So permits and approvals, um, we've got federal permits and approvals to, to deal with and state federal uh, state uh, permits and approvals. Again, the Bureau of Reclamation, uh, they'll have to you know, need to do a, a finding of no significant impact. Um, we met with the Army Corps of Engineers and identified that we would be looking at a standard individual permit for, for this project. Um, there, we might also need to do with them a Section 408 permit, which would, if, depending on how far we go into their maintenance area um, and, and the impact of that. You know, so we're, we're still trying to determine if, if in fact, that, that's going to be required. And then wetland mitigation, um, we're pretty sure that there'll be something that we'll have to do um, in regard to that for the intake location. Uh, there's also a potential for um, a real estate uh, permit or, or issuance. You know, with, with the you know, the, the core is you know, the core, but they've got their different divisions, and so this division also may have that requirement that we're we're looking into to see what what that would. Uh, Tail. Um, TCEQ, they, they're going to issue the water diversion rights, which is basically, you know, if it were in the river, it'd be called water rights. You know, so that it's it's what you can it's their permission to take the seawater into your intake, um, and that permit is is set and ready to go. Uh, we just need to get the the land worked out where the intake's going to go. Get get the permission for those land help because that has to accompany. The permit as it goes goes in um, the intake uh, location exemption because we're near the dock as you saw in that one picture we're 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 inside of the the exclusion zone we have to get an exception uh, request approved by TCEQ 
so that we can be that close to the dock and, and intake the water. And that, that exception request has been submitted and is, and is in the queue at TCEQ. And the, the discharge permit, which um, is to approve our uh, co-mingling of the, the concentrate uh, discharge from the saltwater plant and with the current discharge from the wastewater treatment plant, and that, that permit has been submitted to TCEQ. They came back with some questions on the, on the administrative completeness, and so we're working through those issues, and then we'll have that um, going back. The Texas Parks and Wildlife, uh, there are some oysters <coughs> that you can see, uh, oyster beds right in that intake location. Those would have to be relocated. That's going to require permitting with, with their guidance on how that is to be done, where it's to be done. And so that's that's going to have to happen. There's also a permit uh, for uh, sand and gravel, which they have already said we do not have to get. We're, we're excluded by rule for for that. So any any questions on the, the permits and approvals? Very good. Note that our chairman, Mr. Friedman, is here. Sorry, no we forgive you. I didn't need your staff. Right. We're just uh, we're going over the, the project, kind of looking at the site, talking about right now some of the permits and approvals that need to be done. Um, talking more about the intake than anything else, just the location of it. And that's because it, as we get into this, the intake is going to be the big, that's, that, that's the area where the intake and the discharge are the areas of contention, of public interest, of, of regulatory interest. So that's why I, I kind of spent a little more time on that just to give you that awareness because that's the stuff that's going to be coming up and at you, you know, pretty, pretty um, quick. So the, the wetland mitigation, can you go to that map? So the, perhaps you, you do don't, don't know these answers. So right where the intake is, um, that, that's one color. Is that like the most serious of all wetland colors? It, it, it's just how they, they, design, they, they designate these wetlands in different ways and, and, it, and it either how they determined it or, or is it intermediate, but, but that, that's, that's the color that they use for the coastline. For that? For that. For the coastline. See like the light green that basically we're moving up and around. Right. How serious is something? Like, what if we're like, hey, we want to run through there. We don't want to have to move our line around. That, that's going to, that's where the environmental study is going to be helpful in determining exactly what that impacts there are. You know, right, right now, I, I can't say. I don't, yeah. I don't know. And that's, and, and, and based on those findings and based on those discoveries would be whatever mitigations that the Corps would say, you know, would need to take place. So at this at this preliminary point where we are, it's 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 it's, it's more an awareness than, than the specifics relative to those spots. It's just like you know, I'm looking at the map, and that looks like a little tiny place, and it's crazy. We gotta. I, I wonder how they determine this is a wetland. Is it just satellite imagery? If I had to guess, it, it's, it's, it's sat right? they do a lot of satellite imagery. Sometimes they'll they'll go they'll add satellite imagery with with you know flyovers with and then sometimes with boots on the ground but but looking at that spot because when, once they designate it you've got to you've got to address it yeah and so in the environmental in the fact that the environmental team is coming in this afternoon there'll be boots on the ground tomorrow looking at those sites determining initially initial determination of you know what you know it may be why why are you calling it this now what what, what what so so that there there may even be discussion to say no this isn't but but that's that's all pending that ground level um uh, books and evaluations can you get it can it be changed like let's say they come in they look at it can it be determined oh you know it's now that we're looking at it, sunny closer is not even a wetland. You have past your stuff right through it. Or if if if, if it's we're not worried about it, throw your dirt there. If it's not a, if it's determined it's not a wetland, we can we can go. But that would that would require you know, hey, we don't think it's a wetland because A B C D E F G, and then the government looks at it and go, okay, we agree. That's that was you know who knows and all right, it's not a wet you know. So that 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 would have to take place in the timelines for that and the. You know whatever that they would would require for that um, 
and, and right now that we don't we don't know what that would be. Sure. And it's not uncommon before you got there, but we had to do it at the club. We had a mangrove mitigation site that is the right hand side of number four now when we built the harbor. And Army Corps had to come in and it's not unusual for them to go through this process. The exact same thing happened to us. Located. Yeah, they locate it, they tell us how to do it, and then we go and do it. Yeah, they locate what? They, so they located the area that we were gonna put the harbors in. Yeah. And then they said you gotta build you gotta be able to produce these mangroves somewhere else. And so we had to build the mangrove mitigation site on the right of four, all that stuff. And but they they walked us through the process and then then we hired contractors too. Same as the wetland. Yep. Yeah, you know, they might if, if I recall and, uh, that if you had like Five thousand square feet. You may have to find fifteen thousand square feet to fill the wetland. Exactly what we did. Ours was, not, like two to one. Ours was almost one. three to one at the club. Yeah. yeah. And then we had to maintain that with fresh water for like three and a half years. We had to build irrigation for it, and then eventually it turned back over into. But I don't know about the wetland on the coastal. Yeah. That's wetland because it's coastal. I mean, it's yeah. it's. Such a tides, right? And, and that's not as they want for the birds. They they need areas that are that are shallow for for the birds, and that's that's what that one. Is. The other ones are in inland wetlands for different species. Mosquitoes. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that's that's good. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So the pilot. Pilot purpose um, required by TCEQ. Um, there's basically three stages of operation. The first stage is a run. It's, it's not it's not prescribed by time or, or there's no rules. But you run it, and you're going to run it in order to find out where your sweet spot is. You know, with the equipment that you have, the waters that you have, the conditions that you have. And so you're looking at maybe 30 days before you start the test. And the, per and the reason is that you want to find, all right, basically you, you, you experiment around, you kind of go where it's too high and then you back off that a little bit because you want to maximize the, uh, the productivity of the plant. You want to get as much water out of it as you can. And so you look for that spot and then once you find that determinant, you run a test for 30 days. This is on the clock, then the TCEQ with all the data pulled down and the reports written. And, and you're demonstrating at that point that, that the plant uh, can, can address these waters, it can handle them, it can, it can make your bottle water, not cause other problems, you know, not, not, not impose a risk of, you know, to the public. And then um, after that one is complete, and, it, and, you, and when I'm saying 30 days, the plant has to run for 30 days, but you know, say, you know, pilot equipment gets more, a lot of wear and tear on it. And it works at different sizes. So a motor goes out, and you have to wait two days for the motor. So then you would run 32 days because you got to make up for those two days or 10 days in between. So you got those 30 days, and then in phase three, it runs for a 10 day period, and it, and it shows you go through and you do cleaning and then you bring it back so that it shows that you can you can have an issue, recover, and come back to where you were, you know, that it doesn't tear everything up, or that it doesn't make it to where. Its efficiency is now nowhere near where it should be. So, so those those two uh, pieces of that three phase pilot test are what gets reported and goes into the uh, report back to TCEQ, and they they then review that, they look at it, and then they'll issue their um, permission to proceed with the plant and the design. You know, and, and then they'll give you a list of criteria of how you have to operate it, or you know that you can operate it up to this flux and this recovery and here, here are the stipulations and so anything that they're going to to, to address in potential limitations or, or modifications of operation on the plant, they're going to derive that when they go through that pilot report and pilot data when they issue their, their go ahead on the full scale plan. So it also allows you to um, say, you know, rough, Increase things, run it up, get it to where maybe it does clog, and then why did it clog? How do you, what do you have to clean it so that when you're running the full scale plant, you know, you know what to expect, and you know how you're going to be able to take care of it. 
because it's a lot easier when it's small than when it's big. And, and so that, that's, the, that's the purpose for the pilot. To show you the, 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 where the general arrangement is, and we've got to get this over to the good folks at, at TechSpack that, that are allowing us to, to look at locating here. But, but this kind of gives you a general idea of, of where it would be. Um, this is the pump station it's down here. This is where the intake would be. Uh, it would be taken up like seven parking spots in an in a, in a area right there. And um, that's, that's where we would locate the intake. We would, would come over and, and we would say, look, to get off, you know, just put, put a straw in the water there off the dock, bring it back over into the plant. We would get uh, river water from the plant, one that's over here, and then uh, and probably toads or something along those lines bring it in in order to simulate the mixing conditions and the, the parallel parallel flows. So so that's that's kind of the, the physical layout that we're looking at and the location that we're looking at for the pilot plant. And it would be using the power off of the existing transformer there feeding that, that lead station. And it would be out there, you know, as I said, we've got the, the, the minimum requirements, but you know, we would, it would probably be six months you know, in total out there doing both the, the TCEQ portion and then the, the okay, what, what else what else can we throw at this thing to see what impacts there would be on the on the full scale plan. So any any questions on the pilot? Are they plan? present and involved in that TCEQ or are they just based off our reports? Reports. Okay. So you know sometimes if 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 you know this project, you know, there could be interest in it. You know, because you're on the front, the leading edge of some of these. So, so sometimes people may come down to look at the pilot, visit the, you know, the TCEQ people, or Texas Water Development Board people. They they may come down for a look see, but it's not it's not it's more curiosity, more out of you know, curiosity, learning, understanding, kind of seeing what what's going on because you know these are other things that are coming and going in other places, and they're they're, they're working to come up to speed. You know, as everybody else does as they go through it. So, in the environmental, um, in the environmental survey, survey, you know, they look at historical sites. You know, was you know, did the colonists come up and set a you know encampment right there at that intake location? No. But the, those, that's the type of stuff that they'll be looking at to make sure that there's no significant. Uh, historical site and artifacts and things that could be um, destroyed or, or, or uh, not not properly addressed in a construction cycle. Social impacts, you know, in the community is it is it disaffecting any particular group of people more than another? Um, endangered species, uh, that's always a big big one. Um, fish habitat, uh, salinity variations in the, in the waters around it because. All of, all of those three items really kind of tie in together, you know, um, and so that, that, that's a big, a big check mark on the environmental um, um, survey that, that, that they go and look and do. And so, and then you're, you're going to interface with the Army Corps of Engineers, National Marine uh, Fisheries, Texas Parks and Wildlife, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and, and, and in total, between the, the assessments, the reports, the write-ups, the reviews, the questions, the answers, this whole this whole thing is going to be about a, up to a 24-month cycle, and it's and it's underway. And, you know, they, the last last meeting y'all approved that, and that's that's what we approved. So that's that's rolling, and then with that's and these are all the activities that'll go in, and then, you know, then each one of those breaks down into you know specific on the ground look through for for that. Uh, any questions on um, environmental? So then we've got to uh, the saltwater plant design. You know, the preliminary design, and, you know, is the first you know ten percent, the kind of the, the basics that you've seen that we brought in here today on those those pictures. And here's the general plan. Here's generally how it's going to go. Here's sort of what the, the piping and things are going to be. That, that that's in the feasibility part because that part has to go in. In order to make your initial, you know, worst case budget situation, in order to make your 
your land impacts and, and, and to start to define the environmental and, and those aspects that they're going to want to see. So, so that's that's underway on the initial part, but then the, the, the full scale plant design, you know, has to has to come in and, and, and do it in order to get your full plans, uh, your specifications, have it set up to where it can be put out you know, for bid contractors can then take down and construct off of it. And you have to have your full scale design and the PCQ when they look at that to approve it, they'll go back and look at the pilot reports, they'll look at those designs to make sure everything is in accordance with, with what they think it should be and their directives that they provided along the way. Um, and then that's that's kind of what would be uh, entailed in that. Any any questions on, on that part? And we have not we have not started the full scale design yet. That's 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 probably the next the next piece coming. All right. At that at that point, I'm going to turn it over to uh, to Bill and let him cover the next few sections, and then I'll I'll come back. So, the money. Um, so we've got Kyle Frazier. He, he brought uh, he brought a satchel, and I think that he brought money you know, from Austin. Right? Right. Right. Yeah. As you know, as you know, Kyle's been working um, pretty hard on your behalf to, to to make sure that if there's any money coming down the, down the pike that. Uh, they're going to know about the good modern water industry. And as we look at some of these sources of funds, obviously you had you know, approximately 15 million in uh, general obligation bonds that you approved 12, 12 years ago, somewhere thereabouts. And so that's still in the, in the, in the works. However, it's not going to pay a lot for a project 12 years later um, and totally different, a lot larger than we're talking about. So, um, what we've done thus far is we made a pre-application to SWIFT funds, which is the, gosh, what does it stand for? State uh, Water Implementation Fund for Texas. There we go. We call it SWIFT because I can't remember what it stands <laughs> for. And so there was a $10 million loan application for the uh, all the work that you have already authorized to do, that you have two possibilities to fund that. One is part of the, the $15 million general obligation bonds or the 10 million from the SWIFT funding. The, the advantage of the SWIFT funding is it postpones your payback until you start the construction. Um, and I think it gives you an a grant. No, it's, it's a loan. It's a, yeah, well, it would be a tax commitment. So we're, we're yeah, using it's, our authorization. It's a commitment. Uh, however, if you go through that pro program, I, I believe, and I think Kyle agrees with me, that if you use the SWIFT funds, they're, they are more familiar with the project and possibly more apt to work with you on the, the next one, or the one down further, the Texas Water Fund. That's the new fund that is being that was funded by the, the, the excess in revenues for the state. We expect that there's another round of revenues coming into that fund. And if you are shovel ready, you know, somewhere next year, uh, I can't help but think that that would be an advantage to getting that funds. I don't, I don't know of anybody that would be as far along as you. Corpus had a public hearing this last week, which was fairly painful. Fairly, it was painful. It was painful because it, it was just done in a different way. And, and so uh, David was there and, and Roel, you might know, were, were there and a lot of people from Texas Diesel. Just, just to witness that. And so we want to avoid that, and that's where we get into that, that environmental. We want to make sure we bring the environmental and, and all our stakeholders together to begin at the beginning and not try to push it down someone's throat or, or giving the perception of pushing it down someone's throat. So that would be where we would hope that you could get some some grant, or we, they call it loan forgiveness, low interest loans through that fund. Uh, reclamation, Bureau of Reclamation, uh, we expect at 25%, that's max that they can, they can actually uh, fund for construction up to a limit. We wouldn't reach that limit. And then, you know, there's a possibility, you know, you have 
additional tax and or revenue bonds associated with the, with the additional costs if there's any additional it, it, this doesn't cover so that's kind of where we are from looking at that and maintaining that how do you want to any quick comments um I, I think and this is more perception uh, there were two desal projects on the uh, this initial set of applications one was uh corpus christi which was the largest request say over 500 million dollars and then y'all down down close toward the bottom uh, not not quite the smallest but almost the smallest and i i think that bodes well I, I doubt very seriously i mean there's a limited amount of funds in that in that particular uh, program and and i doubt very seriously if they're going to give all of that money to corpus christi uh, they may give some to Corpus Christi, uh, but I, I think that, and, and I think there's an honest uh, desire to see a desal, a marine desal project. No one has said that specifically, but that's the impression I get. Uh, and along that kind of goes along with the the, the new water fund as well. Uh, it, Senator Perry specifically put in that legislation a marine desal project uh, outline. And so they want to see a marine desal project. And so I think that bodes well for a project that is as far along as y'all's is and is as not as, as expensive as some of these other uh, concepts. So Corpus is brackish, right? That's no, it's seawater. No, it's seawater. Oh. Okay. There in the bay. Okay. Yeah, there was, um, I guess, so one of them. They've they got three options. It, it, it's a mess. Okay. 100 people, over 100 people testified. I would say that one. One fourth of those were in favor of it. The other seventy-five percent were adamant. And I, I do need to clarify that the ten million dollar for for Swift would be guaranteed with the with the the uh, tax obligations uh, in, in the fifteen. So the, it's those are not. Same, it's the same, money. It's the money. same pot of money. Yeah. And the deferred repayment is a really favorable option. Yes. Yeah, so that's a program that uh, that we would want to take advantage of because of the lower interest uh, that would be available to us and the possible uh, deferred uh, repayment uh, period. So that's why we would want to use the, the SWIFT program. That's the, the advantage of that program. But the, the part of the money is still our tax uh, uh, obligations. Is the district set up to have referendums? What if you put it out to a vote to Yeah, but the fifteen was the fifteen million like like hey, it's it basically it's like a referendum of it will cost this much and do you approve to do it? Yeah, that's kind of what it is. Okay. Great. So so Bill had a question related to what were the opposition, what was the opposition? Most of it was irrelevant uh, to the project. Uh, a lot of it was not in my backyard. It was it was in a community that they had already put a approved a uh, or factory what, what was it a ammonia mm. fat plant right in their in their backyard so that whole community was developed the signs and the t-shirts and everything they were totally against that um, the legitimate uh, environmentalists said hey they hadn't done any environmental mm. impact. That this is before we can act on this. We need to, they weren't against it. They just wanted them to do the proper environmental. They, they, they got that part without doing the environmental stuff. Huh? I, yeah, of course. Yeah. When they turned in the permit, it wasn't a requirement for them. Is it a requirement now? It's, it's a requirement now, yeah, but, but it, they, they, they said it wasn't then. Two years ago. A lot of the people said, well, it is now. Why wouldn't, in good stewardship, you do it? And, and that, that was. You know, there wasn't an answer back, but that was a lot of the attack going in. And so everybody was also pushing for a contested hearing. Which there will be, I'm sure. They, they, they've got to have contested, which means that they, for the people that complain or have written testimony, you either get party status or not party status. Are you affected by it? Okay, <clears> you're, <throat> or are those group parties together as one group? And then they'll go through hearings just like the court. Just in order for us to fund this, it's it's going to require going to the voters anyways, is it not? 
great. So this really is on us to educate people, and then the community will decide this this will never be something we force on people. Right? Well, okay. you know, unless you, you've authorized 15, they, or the voters authorized 15, if, if you do, and, and I'm, I'm not acting as your financial advisor, but my understanding is if you revenue bonds, you don't have to go for voters, but if you do geo bonds, you have to go to voters. If you were able to fund a project that fits within the 15 million, say so you got 50% grant, I mean from 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 various sources, and then you you got an additional 25% where you did revenue bonds, you could do that without going to the voters. But you may choose to go to voters anyway. So, uh, but if you do any additional re uh, geo bonds. Here will be one of the objections, and so I, there's some smart people in here. I'd love to hear their, their response. If new people would would just stop moving here, we wouldn't need this. You know, if the builders would just stop. <laughs> if the builders would just stop building new homes. You know, why why are you, why are we letting the you know the development on the island? You know, they're putting in new stuff. I heard there's this guy who builds stuff over at Laguna Vista. Just no more new homes. That's not a problem, and then I don't have to pay for you know this desalinization. That's a, good, that's a good point, except the fact that you're building this because you you may not have water, you may have zero water to exist as customers because like 20% on the uh, reservoir capacities, uh, Brownsville was almost out of water in 2011, uh, 20, excuse me, 2003, yep. and you're the next draw up. Yeah. It's a Northern California problem. They, they, you know, Cambria, that area, they give out uh, water permits. They might only give out two a year. And so, the, if you're the lower you are in the pecking order, if the, you know, your land's not worth anything if you're number seventy-eight on, on the list. You know, and that 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 is a potential problem here. If we finally say we just stop giving out water permits, and you know, that's so we can stop the building. That's ter terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's a good argument. Yeah. I, I, I agree. I yeah. don't. I but mean, that's, that's, that's stuff yeah. I know. But yeah. I, that will be one of the major arguments against it. Will be well, mm -hmm. we continue to build, and yet we don't even have enough water. So why, you know, we need to stop people from building. That that will be well, one it should of the be the builders' plans going forward too. That's what. I mean, there's, I think we have to also cue people into the other side of that argument, which is as you build more homes, as new people come, the tax base expands greatly. You know, if you build $50 million worth of new value, That's right. you're taxing that value. Those are new water paying customers. They're bringing down the cost overall, right? Because there's a certain sweet spot that we find. So money-wise, I think that we need to be able to show that, like, look, if the population stays the same, if we cut it right now, there's still the chance we run out of water, so we have to build this. But, and it'll cost all of you X. But if we grow at a responsible rate, we're talking, you know, one to two percent a year over the next 50 years, it's going to actually keep the cost per person lower than if we didn't. Does that make sense? And so our smart finance guys have to be able to show that growth is actually good uh, if we do it responsibly. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I think we've got to finish the feasibility, um, and I think if you do the environmental, I, I would say within it, it, and find out exactly how much money you get from. If you don't know what supplemental uh, money that you are able to get, so if we said if we said today that we're going to get. Fifteen million dollars, and you go out for thirty million dollar bond issue or whatever it is, and you come find out they only get ten. Now you're five million short. Then you can go back. And get right. You want to make sure that you've got your plan properly developed, <laughs> that you don't have to go back to voters again. Because you're going back to voters again after twelve years. Play well, I thought we already approved that. Yeah, and but we're well, not, some of them aren't going to all remember. I mean, it's, we're not dreaming though about twenty four anyway. We're dreaming about. 26 or right yeah, as far yeah, as going we're shooting for starting construction if, if everything falls into place 
that this thing could possibly cost, barring you know COVID two or, or whatever that, that, that came along. So this also has the intake at, at 20 mgd. Um, you know it has the the pipelines, the discharge, <coughs> everything is sized for for a 20 mgd intake, which would be approximately a 10 mgd plant. And when I say the size, the the the, the, the infrastructure that would go in at the beginning and then would be sized for a max of, of you know like a 10 mgd plant in, in general terms. So so it's it's set up again in a worst case situation based on um, budgets that we have and not everything on every we don't have a budget price from people on everything because some of the uh, items aren't designed far enough to even you know go get you know a budget price on it. You know. So so we took you know rules you know rules of that rules of thumb you know average prices from from other things that we've seen and then we added a, a factor on top of that. Also, uh, we I figured it on a cost, you know, what a contractor would pay, and then I marked it up. You know, I did a contractor markup of ten and fifteen, which would be a twenty-six point five percent markup. So it's got like a twelve million dollar markup on the whole project, which is probably maybe more than somebody might mark it up in a competitive environment. But again, don't know where they would be with that. And what we wanted to do was say. What was the high water mark? I didn't. I didn't want to come in here and say, "Oh, it's going to be you know twenty five thousand dollars," and then it comes out at sixty. You know, and then you're going, "Why did you tell me?" You know, so I'm telling you that it could be as much as this, and then every every effort is going to be made between now and as we go through things, you know, to push it push it down. But some of the discussions that, that would need to go on um, would be so on the intake. Do we do we foresee needing to be at that size would we would we go down a size so that we eliminate one of the stream you know shrink the footprint a little bit um you know anytime we, we can reduce you know reduce the stream or reduce the pump you reduce the pump you're eliminating the drive and by the time you know you, you maybe you're, you're saving a couple million dollars you know at, at the intake level maybe you know a little more and i'm just talking in in general terms these aren't you know aren't exact but I, what, what I wanted to be able to do was give you a potential worst case and then what, what are things that can be done, you know, to, to drive that down. Um, and so that's, those, are the, those are the things that have been moved forward. You know, we could reduce equipment, reduce uh, footprints, reduce, you know, then that, that reduces cost. Does it, you know, if you cut out, you know, if you reduce the plant by half, does it reduce half this cost? No, not necessarily because you know, you still have the excavate. You know, you still there, there's still a fixed cost that you've got to overcome, and then then you get into kind of a variable um, cost arrangement for for uh, skid, for drive, for pump kind of thing. So so that's that's um, kind of how it was looked at. So the intake right here, that's the the subtotal for the, the intake. And that's roughly 30% of the total, more or less. Uh, the, the pipeline, intake pipeline is, is you know, a million. The discharge pipeline is 2.8. And this is just the, the general distance times a, a fixed amount, you know, to, to get to that. As the distance changes, the cost changes. The, and and, and um, those two combined are roughly 7% of the total. And then the plant itself, 37.5. That's that's roughly 63 percent, you know, of the the total cost. Then um, the, the the cost that we've already identified and been discussing the, the studies, the design, the property that, that the 10 million that was you know set up with the the, the fund you know out of the 15 million bond fund. That's that's what that is. Construction management into the process, you know, roughly two million, and, and wetland mediation. That's a that's a, a swag based on a text dot project that went for a similar kind of footprint that the Corps of Engineers um, imposed on them. It, it could be that the nature of this product project and what the people want that they that that's less or that's that's you know more. I, you know, at this point, we don't know. But I wanted I, I had to put something in there in order as a placeholder 
and, and hopefully I was at the, you know, on the higher end that mm -hmm. they don't come back and, and surprise me with something bigger than that. But but right now we don't we don't know what the mitigations are, so we don't know what the costs are going to be. But but that's kind of a placeholder that we put in there, you know, for a, a total uh, impact of like 72 million, which is the engineering, the construction management, the wetland, all the studies, and then the the, the four principal components of the the construction itself. So questions, you know, questions on that. Hopefully, you know, hopefully this can go down to be, you know, in the neighborhood of, you know, 50 to 60. Um, but, you know, right now, no, no, and this, this is kind of a, a worst case shot. You guys are practically giving it away. Um, yeah, so 72, big number. Uh, one thing is clear to me is uh, Norris Leal is absolutely the right engineer for the job. You guys have done exceptional work. This has been a very thorough presentation. Everything you've done up to this point has um, exceeded my expectations. Um, you know, obviously, there's a lot to discuss and give us a lot of information, but I, for one, am grateful that we as a board and as a district and, you know, that we're looking in this direction um, with uh, solution based thinking. Mm -hmm. Because um, I think this is a frontier that we have to engage in, um, and we have to get you know creative with how we're going to generate the funds and uh, find the funding. And and we quickly came up with some great ideas uh, in the region and uh, our proximity of our our you know ambitious Mars um, you know multi planetary inhabitors. Um, I think we get them involved, uh, and I think this number isn't so appealing. Or um, obnoxious. It's a lot of feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when. And uh, and I don't. I for one don't want to be a part of a board that just continues to ignore the fact that we're going to run out of water one day, and unless we start doing something about it. And uh, and I think we have a. I think we have a government that is uh, friendly to this type of. To this type of thinking. So, um, yeah, big number. Um, Rome wasn't built in a day. I think we got the right people, you know, doing the job. And, um, and I'm confident that God will provide, you know, because uh, he's bigger than that. And uh, and there's a need. So I feel like we'll find a, find a way. But on behalf of the board, I'd just like to say thank you for everything you presented and everything you've done at the point. We appreciate you guys. Yeah, I'm appreciative to the former boards that you guys were had foresight to look into it and start to discover it and think about it and, and you know, we're kind of building on your shoulders. Absolutely Thank you. well said, man. Thank you. Thank you for the kind work. Yeah. And, uh, in general, I think the community overall has been exposed to this kind of technology and this water source, the abundance, either it's fracking or seawater, that's not a fracking water also available to us. Um, but this is a, a, a so the community is familiar. Uh, what you said about you know, the, the dollar amount, you know, it's right now it's big, but it's a big amount. So when you go before the, before the public, if you're going to ask it to your to revenue or obligation fund, and I don't need to tell you, but to have a more which is it, 72 or 50? Right, or right. You know, what are we going to do? You know, people like those kind of things. And we're kind of overall kind of uh, tribal. See what <clears throat> the, the northern part of the Luna Valley area is going to get, and then of course the island, and then the people here in the mainland. We have to <coughs> sell them as well, tell them this is. But you're getting us well, we're getting 20 million gallons a day, which is going to be used by everyone. <clears throat> and they're going to say, well, yeah, right, but how much is going that way, and how much is going that way, how much is staying right here, you know, and, and further, next out of the world, or something. And I think that's why it's important we're building it in Port Isabel. I think that's really a valuable thing that we get to tell people. I think it's why it's also important that we have a committee of people just like Rudy, right? Rudy? I agree. That's yeah. I, I think I think your 
continued support and input along with other constituents like you that represent you know members of this community that's grown up here lived here served here could give us that kind of valuable uh, perspective which would help us get to a place where we can have something of depth and weight that we can you know that we can uh, present to the to the voters and then ultimately let them make that decision i think that's where we were correct in the, in the last bond is, is we got people outside of this room to get in a room and help us um, define you know the direction that they wanted to go based on all the information and facts that we presented so they got support as well that's bullet point number three identify community street that's invaluable three, three is it ideal because he's been there he's seen the ups and downs and the Plus that's one of the things I really drew from that from the conference we went to. That was, that was one of the most, you know, the, the group of people that got together talking about the community involvement was really a, a great thing to be a part of. We're all in this together. That's equally important as anything that you're doing here. That, that the community's not behind you, right. no matter what, how great project you So this, we're about, this, this is the stakeholders, these are the activities that, that we would look at doing. And then there's one, one last aspect is electric power. This, this saltwater RO plants use a lot of power. We're looking at probably three megawatts. Um, I think the current contract is December 25, isn't it, Charles? Oh, yeah. The power? No, uh, April 2027. 2027, okay. So before, before the, um, the plant goes into operation. The, the current contract that you have on power is going to expire and have to be replaced with um, with a new contract. It will probably be more. So, just as an awareness, as we go, we are going to be using a lot of power. And you know, a one cent difference, you know, at that size plant can you know, be you know, three hundred or two hundred sixty-five thousand dollars, two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. You know, that that's. That's the impact, you know, going from five cents to six cents or four cents to five cents. You could have in a, in a three megawatt environment. So, but just again, the, the concept here is to give you situational awareness. So as things go forward and things come up, you can you can appreciate what what that is and how it parlays into the into the plant or the impact long term. So that's that's all we have. Thank you for your attention. Any more questions? Oh, is there a plant? that we can go look at at some point in the next year that's actually doing, we could go watch how those pumps work and watch how the- I, I would suggest going to Paul's um, Bath, California. That's, that's the newest and they build a That's California. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, I just, I, I mean, I think it's something we think about as, a, you know, as a water district, that sometime in the future, you know, it'd be, or at least to have a presentation about it or understand it. Back, back to Rudy, chairman, we went to Tampa Bay, and Tampa Bay, unfortunately, set some of these off back about a decade because they didn't properly pre-treat the water and it wasn't as successful as it's been the moment. Now, now it's great, right? but it was a public-private partnership, which was okay, but um, they sold water to cheap and they spring from the pre-treatment. Yeah. I would say of that 60 million or whatever, 50 million for the plant, one third of that is pre-treatment. I just think it'd be something worth us doing sometime in the future. I think you need to understand. I mean, it, it, it's helpful because when you're talking to your constituents, you need to understand watching this and actually the work by seeing this. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Okay. Does that conclude this uh, workshop?